obviously as recruiters we're speaking to candidates and clients on a daily basis and I think listening to phone calls around the office the first question on everyone's minds is well were you working from home today um, so I think that's sort of the first topic we want to look at um, so sort of Matthew kind of can can basically as an employer can you enforce an employee to work in the office or alternatively work from home yeah well I guess uh, I get I guess a lot of us um, uh, at, at different points have have been working from home um, and I mean, in principle, um, in principle, yes, yes, you can um, require an employee to do either of those things on the basis that that employees are required to to, to follow the the lawful and reasonable directions of their of their employer. So that's in principle the position. Although it becomes more complicated when you um, when you start looking at at particular issues such as um, if employees can argue that uh, that for example it, it might be unsafe for them to to come into the office um, or perhaps in some cases that uh, they don't actually have the the capability to um, uh, or, the, or the the space and and, and working environment to, to do their jobs properly from um, uh, from home so while while in principle that that that's possible, um, I think you have to to look in each case at well what what is the exact situation both in both in general within Hong Kong and also thinking about you know the the sort of legitimate um, issues that a particular that a particular employee may have. Now, if there's a situation where a particular um, building has been has been um, uh, been, been, been placed off off limits or because it's in a particular zone where the government has said people people can't come in they're not then obviously that that gives a very good basis for saying well look you, you can't come in and you you have to work from home um uh but in other situations where um where people are able to come in it i, I suppose the, the, the question you need to ask is is there a is there a legitimate risk um if, if people turn around if employees turn around and say well i don't want to come in because i'm i'm worried about um catching catching covid on my commute or, or or being in the office building where there are more people around um you know cons you know taking those considerations into account before before you take any any kind of um disciplinary action against someone for um uh, for failing to follow what you've what you've asked them to do i mean i think logically speaking um uh, a lot uh, you know a lot of people have uh, have have been happy to work from home um, because uh, if, because of a, a fear of, of, of the virus and, and of sort of moving around and so on. So um, I think a lot of people have, have sort of taken that on board, but at the same time, um, it, can be, it can be a very challenging environment for people. I mean, if you're living in a, in a, in a small apartment or if you're uh, in, in an environment where there are, there are other people there as, as well sharing that apartment with you, um, you know, it can be a real challenge to to actually be be working from home, and I think we'll touch on on some of those points as we go along. Sure. I suppose the, the the other scenario is where you have someone who who says, "Well, there's there's nothing that that is preventing me from actually getting to the office and coming coming into the office, um, and therefore I, I am I am going to come to the office and, and work from there." Um, and that's really a point at which, which as an employee, you need to decide. You know, do do you want to give someone a direction not to, um, not not to come to the office because, a, as a company, you make a decision that um, uh, you simply don't want people coming for, for for risk purposes and making it very clear to people that this is you consider this to be a reasonable and and and, and lawful direction in the circumstances. So yeah, in principle, this is possible. The short answer, um, but. You do need to look at it on a sort of case by case, um, on a case by case basis in terms of how you implement that. Sure. Then I guess sort of that comes out of that are there for employers sort of data privacy, security implications that they need to be aware of when they're perhaps letting employees take confidential information out of the office, which would normally never happen. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a there's really a, a quite a lot to, to to think about in that regard because um, just because someone is working from home it doesn't mean that the the, the normal rules don't apply um, so you've got to you've got to think of you've got to think of data privacy you've got to think of confidentiality you've got to think of um, 
of, of sort of network network security and those types of things. Um, and it's you know it's it's quite difficult sometimes when you're reacting to the situation and, and everyone's nervous about, about about the situation to, to, to remember um, all of these things but um, but it is important to, to remind people of what what the um, of what the obligations are in, in, in relation to these specific areas. Um, so for example with um, with things around data data privacy um, you know you, you, you people still have to, to, to comply with the requirement to uh, to hold information to securely and to make sure that they're not um, uh, that, that they're not somehow um, leaking leaking information which which um, which needs to be kept um, confidential um, I mean as, as, as lawyers we obviously have um, uh, 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 professional confidentiality obligations um, so again really important to make sure that you're um, uh, that you're keeping that you know you, you're keeping that information as far as you can confidential if you're if you're going to the office for example knowing that you're going to be working from home for a period of time and and um you know and you, you decide to, to to try and take files or things like that um back home with you um then you know question well thinking carefully about how you do that making sure you don't leave something um i know it sounds silly but um you know not ma making sure that you don't leave something on on public transport or um or that things become visible while you while you're while you're traveling um so quite, quite important to um to keep those things still still in mind um and, and make sure that the employees are aware of, of their obligations and try um try to comply with those in, in working from home and it, it, it goes it, sort of a, a proper sort of um, policy in place, sort of all documented. That there's then a, a record, so that then you know if people breach it later on. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I think um, you know this is one of the things that people have have grappled with because it's been quite a, a fast moving environment, and we've had we've had uh, you know what's going on with the virus changing, what what the government's response has been changing, and so on. But um, you know, it, it, it's strongly recommended that people try to have um, uh, work from home policies in place or, or broader policies which, which cover um, the types of issues that come up. And these these may already be covered in um, in policies that that uh, the companies have. But uh, I think one of the things that people have had to do and, and certainly are recommended to do is to take a look at well, what what do you currently have in terms of policies and, and what might you need to to update or put in place to make sure that in these unprecedented times you're um, covering yourselves as far as you can and providing providing clear guidance to employees as to as to what the what the required procedures and required standards are um, so for i mean for example with um you know this follows on from the theme of 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 confidentiality and, and data privacy, um, uh, thinking about you know the, the the work environment at home and um, you know trying to make sure as far as possible that, that that people are connecting to connecting to networks securely and um, and, and that, that you know there isn't sort of leakage of information in in that way um, and um, and and also. Uh, using for example you know in some situations people may be using suddenly using um personal devices to do to do um to do their work as opposed to using a work device and whether um whether those devices have the same level of security on them as as, as their work devices would have um it's, it's those sort of considerations which to, to the extent that um you know to the extent that you can have it having a sort of policy in place so that people People are clear about um, about what's required of them, even, even though, in principle, it's no different to to the obligations they would have while they're while they're normally at work and in the office. It's really reminding people that, despite being being at home and in a different environment, you're still required to 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 really have the same the same standards in terms of uh, in terms of how you operate. So, um, so policy is quite quite important, but at the same time, it's a challenge because. As things change, you don't want to be updating your policies absolutely constantly if you if you can help it because that's a, a huge amount of, of administration time and so on. But um, but definitely the more clear guidance you can give to people um, through through policies and updates, uh, the better the better the position really. 
Obviously, I think sort of some people have been working at home as a result of consequences like yourself in that they're, they, they're, they're stuck overseas. Um, so, and we've definitely had that, I think, in Hong Kong, where obviously there's a, a lot of a large expat community and people perhaps traveled home at Christmas to see family and have been stuck in another location. Um, I, I think it's obviously a concern as to what I suppose the tax and pension implications may be if you're stuck outside Hong Kong and whether that is a, a sort of responsibility just of the employee to sort of deal with their own kind of tax position on that behalf or if there is any responsibility on an employer in that regard. Yeah, I mean, that's also a, an issue that, that I think a, a lot of people have faced and that, and that has become more more challenging over time because um, I suppose at the at, at the beginning of the of the of the pandemic it was a situation where a lot of people travelled overseas um, for Chinese New Year just at the point in time when when things in mainland China were were um, kind of kicking off and then whether people were were able to actually actually get 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 back um, again and then. As governments have reacted, there've been there've been sort of lockdowns and, and travel bans and things like that. So people have been caught in in quite um, in quite difficult um, in quite difficult situations. I think I think the, the first thing to look at is really the um, the immigration implications of 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 working temporarily abroad or being being stuck abroad. Um, so, for example, if you if you are in a particular place. Um, do you, do you have a right under under the laws of that jurisdiction to actually be be working from there? And I know that's that's something that um, particularly with the um, with with the US, a number of of employers have faced. Um, and uh, because in a lot of cases, if for example, you know, right right at the beginning of things, when people were traveling, probably on um, on on tourist visas, um, a tourist visa typically would not give you a right to be working in that in, in another jurisdiction um, while while you're actually there. Um, so I know of uh, a lot of people who travel say to the US and on on on, on tourist visas um, or as as tourists um, if they're on a visa waiver program. Um, but um, but you know their employers were, were were very concerned about this because when when they said oh well we're we're kind of we don't want to come back um, at the moment, because of fears about the pandemic, um, uh, yeah, there's issues for the employer because they because they said, well, you don't, you know, you don't have the right to, the right immigration status to actually be working in um, in 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 the US, for example. So, you know, that's that's I suppose the you know the the first thing, um, and um, you know, even even to the extent that um, uh, that, that people are, are, are stuck there. Um, and travel bans are in place. So as the situation has worsened in in, in the US, um, you know, it, it suddenly become very well difficult or even impossible at times to to actually travel. Um, but that, in principle, doesn't change the fact that um, uh, that that you may not have the right to work in 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 the country where you're where you're actually based. And it becomes um, it becomes more difficult when. Um, in some cases, where where companies, where the employer, say an employer in Hong Kong, has a has a has a headquarters or an affiliate, uh, which is in that um, which is in that other that that other jurisdiction, because um, in some cases there can be liability for um, for for the company or for, for for the group because because you have um, you have a presence in that um, uh, in in that other in that in that other jurisdiction, and the person may be deemed to be. To be working for that um, for that organisation while they're while they're stuck in in, in that other country, um, so it is quite a sort of complex thing, and I, and and it it goes through into the into the sort of tax implications of of, of this, and whether um, whether both for employer and for employee um, there there are tax liabilities that that come up. Um, so in in a lot of jurisdictions there are. Um, uh, that there are there are rules which say that once you've been there um, for a certain period of time, you become you become liable to tax. So that is often six months in, in many jurisdictions, but it can be can be less in some jurisdictions. So over time, suddenly individuals may become um, may become liable to tax in 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 that jurisdiction, and that's obviously quite um, quite complicated. Um, 
And in some cases it can place, you know, even though that's primarily an obligation for, for the individual, in some cases it can also give rise to, um, to an obligation for the employer. Um, uh, so for example, in the, um, in, in the UK, you have a situation where if, um, if there is an affiliate or, or headquarters or something of the, of the, of the Hong Kong employer, which is, which is in the UK, um, then that, um, the entity here in the UK um, would be, um, uh, could, could be deemed liable to, uh, to, 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 to do the pay as you earn um, tax, um, tax payments that, that would be required under, uh, under English law. Um, so it does, it does throw up a number of um, complications. And, um, and while I don't claim to be um, any sort of um, tax expert, I'm aware that um, I'm aware that a number of companies in Hong Kong that do have UK headquarters have um, have have turned down requests from people who who said, well, we would like to, um, we would actually for family reasons or, or other reasons would like to work from overseas for a period of time, um, and wanting to go out from Hong Kong and to be for family reasons or something to go back, have sort of said this is not really possible because you know um, it does create difficulties for us um, on the ground in the UK. If people have become stuck and unable to unable to come back then you know I suppose the question becomes do you you know do you do you allow people to actually do some work on the basis that um, that they're actually stuck um, or do you take a very strict view of saying well we don't want to incur these types of uh, liabilities whether it whether it's immigration or whether it's tax or, or both on the basis that it is very unprecedented and you know you don't want the person to just be sitting there somewhere and and, and not working at all so it's it's quite complex and quite sort of a, a case by case thing. And, and just, just one final thing to add on this is, is probably, um, you know, in some cases people, I know a lot of people trying to get back to Hong Kong um, and coming from the UK where, you, where you've had this, this, um, this rule that you can't fly direct from the UK if you've been here for more than two hours. Um, uh, and um, so you basically you have to spend 21 days somewhere else before you can fly back into Hong Kong, um, and I think a number of people have have gone via places like like Dubai, um, and and a couple of the other places quite seem to be quite exotic. There's places like Zanzibar and uh, a couple of other places which um, uh, have allowed people to to come from the UK and where there's been either limited or no quarantine in that in that country while you're there. Um, and then allowing you to to fly on to Hong Kong, and obviously you quarantine when you get to Hong Kong as well. But you know, if it, some people have bitten the bullet and, and and done that. In other cases, people have been very concerned that um, that they might get stuck in that intermediate country. Um, so you go there for this 21 days, and then the situation changes. Um, you're you're living in a hotel, but suddenly you get stuck in that country. Um, and you're between, you know, you're between say the UK and Hong Kong, and what would what would happen in those circumstances? Um, so there's, you know, there's there's a lot to think about um, around that situation, and 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 a yeah. lot of people have been kind of affected by this. 